Yeah, some days I feel unfazed Like when I'm with my friends with a cup raised And on Monday, I got a gun raised Suicide, I'll do a die until hump day Then I go right back at it like an automatic More drinks, more songs, more beats to rap I need a shrink, I'm gone More time keeps passing, no watch, no thoughts at all Just a hat, new era Rep my P's and those O's Need a Phillies with my orange and black to feel home From Citizens Bank back to Camden Yard Took the tale of two cities and trust we go hard Trust we go hard, yes we go hard You said we go hard, I said we go hard Rockin' my Bob Cousy, stockin' up on the loose Did the lyrics come easy, but the life is a doozy And yes, I'm choosy, and no, I won't settle But I still take pop off over that kettle Cause I'm talking bigger picture, and yes, I'm gonna hit you with the... Politicians are very important people, in their opinion. They provide us with things such as uh, tax increases and fines, and instead of using that money to fix roads, build hospitals and help out the general public, they spend it on private jets, expensive dinners, and then the rest they just throw away. You see, most politicians are just about as useful and popular as your local parking inspector. But unlike the local parking inspector, they actually provide something of value. You see, politicians are comparable to clowns. They don't like big cars, children are scared of them, but most important Importantly, they always give us a reason to laugh at them. And that is what this video is about. Now, while most of our politicians are absolute quits, there is a few that the Australian public actually somewhat like. But this video isn't about what politicians we like and don't like. Instead, in today's video, we'll be taking a deep dive into the circus that is Australian politicians and laughing at some of the funniest stunts that these clowns have pulled off. Anyway, that's enough waffle. Let's get into it. Now, politicians have been featured many times on my channel, and obviously it'd be a waste of both of our time if I went back and covered these stories again. But I can already smell the comments saying, You forgot Tony Abbott eating the onion. So to save me the headache and you the finger cramps for typing out these comments, I'll quickly just list all the ones that I've covered in other videos. Those include the Tony Abbott onion incident, the Scott Morrison welding incident, the Scott Morrison flee the country to Hawaii while the bushfires are happening incident, the Scott Morrison backing one out at Engadine McDonald's in 1997 incident, the Scott Morrison getting kicked off this guy's lawn incident, and of course the Harold Holt going missing in the ocean incident and then getting a pool named after him. So if you want to see my in-depth analysis of all of those incidents, Simply go back and watch every single video that I've ever made, leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe. Alright, I know I said it's time to stop the waffle, but now it actually is. So first off, we'll start with an absolute belter with ScoMo's all-time greatest up. And that, of course, is Scott Morrison mixing a little kid while playing soccer. Now, unfortunately for Scott Morrison, he was in Tasmania. And while he was there, he decided to visit an underrated soccer game. Now, while Scott Morrison may be an absolute weapon when it comes to munging down food, unfortunately, it seems that everything that he's been taught about ball sports has come from Boris Johnson. There's not much to say about this incident besides the fact that the kid wasn't hurt and that ScoMo did apologize to him and they laughed it off after. So we'll just let this clip play through one more time and just contemplate how lucky this kid was that he wasn't turned into a human pancake. Next up we have, of course, the Bob Catter section. Pretty much anything that comes out of this man's mouth is pure gold, and he's always up to something odd. But the most famous Bob Catter moment of all time has to be the Thousand Blossoms incident. In 2017, the Australian public had to vote on whether or whether not to legalise same-sex marriage. Now, while Bob Catter was against same-sex marriage, majority of the Australian population voted yes. And when the results came out and he was asked what he thought, this is what he had had to say. I mean, you know, people are entitled to their sexual proclivities. You know, I mean, let there be a thousand blossoms bloom as far as I'm concerned. But now, that was in the past, and it was time to move on. So he quickly turned his attention to much more pressing matters. But, you know, but I ain't spending any time on it, because in the meantime, every three months, I person was torn to pieces by a crocodile in North Queensland. Now while that is Bob Catter's greatest moment of all time, recently he's been up to mischief once again. 
Now for all the Patrick stars out there who are living under a rock, there's two shops in Australia that are under fire now for ripping everyone off. And they go by the names of Coles and Woolworths. Now I'll admit, I don't know much or care much about politics. But when I see the price of VB going up, it boils my piss. Now Coles and Woolworths are in a lot of trouble and the CEOs of both companies had to go to Canberra to talk to the Prime Minister or some sh**. And while this was going on, there was some sort of press conference where Bob Catter and some other bloke decided to dress up as pigs and go band for band. But that's not even the best part because later on when it was Bob Catter's turn to talk at this press conference, he was once again up to his usual antics. You see, when it was Bob Catter's turn to talk to the media, at this press conference, this idiot right here wouldn't shut the f up. So Bob Catter decided to politely tell this guy to can it, and this is how it went. I'm over here stroking my dick. I got lotion on my dick right now. I'm just stroking my shit. Don't speak over me again. Mate, I'm warning you. He's sitting, don't sit speak mate. over me. He thought he knew better than me. This bloke won't shut up. He won't let him else have a say. And I can understand why he won't let him else have a say. You're telling me you taxpayer money to Don't start. keep interrupting me. Money don't money keep start. interrupting me. Do you hear me? Don't keep interrupting me. I have a right to have a say. You don't know you don't. You ever told me I've opened my mouth. You started talking. Right now, shut up! Alright, that's enough about Bob Catter. It's time to move on to Bob Hawke. Bob Hawke has to be one of Australia's most loved Prime Ministers of all time. And the cherry on top is the fact that he absolutely loved beer. Now, while it wasn't an uncommon sight to see Bob Hawke with a Denzel Frothington in hand, the most famous instance of them all has to be the Bob Hawke SCG beer chug of 2012. While walking through the crowd, he was stopped in his tracks and handed this beer. And due to the fact that most of his career was spent as a public servant, he knew that he had to give the people of Australia what they wanted. So he stopped in his tracks, smashed down that beer, and the crowd went crazy. But not only was this one of the greatest moments in Australian politician history, it was probably the most exciting thing to ever happen at a game of cricket. Now unfortunately, Bob Hawke passed away in 2019, but his name and legacy live on in possibly the most Australian way of all time, on his very own beer can. Now while we're on the topic of politicians and beer, we'll have to get into what is possibly the most relatable politician moment of all time. Politicians have struggled for many, many, many years to be relatable to the Australian public, but just the other month, Barnaby Joyce managed to crack the code. Now what I can only assure Shoom was after a big night out, Barnaby Joyce was caught red-handed, lying on the pavement and yelling at someone on the phone. Now despite the fact that this is possibly one of the most relatable moments to the Australian public in Australian politician history, obviously it's not a good look for someone who was once the Deputy Prime Minister. So Barnaby Joyce, while still looking a little bit dusty, decided to go onto the Sunrise TV show and explain what was going on. And all I can say is fair enough, we've all been there, apologies accepted. Now before we get into our last one, we've got to get through some honourable mentions, such as John Howard Bowling, Bob Hawke playing cricket, the Tony Abbott Spring Onion incident, Pauline Hanson and the Burka, and of course, Tony Abbott's Sunday Best. But now, due to the fact that we're running out of time because I spent too much time waffling in the beginning, it's time to get into our last one. And I, of course, save the best till last. And that, of course, is Fraser Anning and the Egg Boy incident. After the Christchurch attack in 2019, Fraser Anning decided to blame the attack on the victims. Now, obviously, that's a pretty dumb thing to say, even for politician standards. But luckily, this young lad was lurking in the shadows and ready to pounce. Now, after he'd heard his fair share of waffle from Fraser Anning, right then and there, he laid an egg and decided to turn Fraser Anning's head into an omelette. Now, despite the fact that he was tackled to the ground and arrested, Egg Boy became a national hero. He even got free beer out of it, and Fraser Anning quit politics forever. You know what they say, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. And on that educational note, it's time to end. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share if you'd like to hear more teachings from the prophet of your ack hunt. And if you enjoyed this video so much that you watched it all the way till the end, make sure to comment he needs some milk. to let me know.